Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 63, we'll take a look at the prescriptive or classic strategy of enterprise architecture. As we learned in lesson 62, enterprise architecture strategies basically describe the overall enterprise architecture team structure, whether it's centralized or decentralized, and how standards are applied and governed and also defined across the enterprise. We saw in Lesson 62 that there were centralized and decentralized strategies, and there were four total strategies. We're going to take a look in this lesson about the prescriptive strategy. The prescriptive or classic strategy of enterprise architecture really specifies how solutions are going to be developed through a set of common standards that are applied across the entire organization. So let me give you an example of what this looks like. And so we have a central organization, in other words, a central governing body of enterprise architects. And those enterprise architects and that team define a set of standards. Now, every business unit and every team within those business units across the company have to apply those same sets of standards. Let me show you an example. So with the prescriptive strategy, let's say that the enterprise architecture team defines the set of standards that we will be using Oracle for databases, F5s for load balancing, compact hardware. Uh, we'll be embracing IBM along with Java. We'll have agile team structures and also a standard way of documenting everything across the entire company. And the prescriptive strategy says every department has to adhere to these standards. Hmm. I imagine a lot of you out there looking at this are probably saying, yeah, right. This would be a horrible place to work. But before we jump into any conclusions, a good architect always thinks about all of the trade-offs, the pros and cons of any type of solution or any type of anything for that matter. So let's actually take a look at both the good and bad about the prescriptive or classic strategy. Because although this looks really bad, there are some good aspects to it. First of all, it reduces overall complexity across the organization. As a matter of fact, it also reduces decision time. In other words, all the business units already have all of the standards, again, whether they be technology, architecture, process, or methodology already defined for them. And because of that, we get reusable assets across each business unit. If we think about security frameworks or any sort of persistence frameworks or any documentation or diagramming techniques or process, we can reuse those assets across each business unit, across each team. And consequently, because of that, one of the best advantages of the prescriptive strategy of enterprise architecture is that it's the lowest cost type of strategy across the enterprise. And so if we look at these advantages, somehow, you know, you could say, okay, it's not all that bad, but let's look at the negatives to counter those. First of all, as most of you probably guessed, this is not a good strategy in the sense that it might not be a fit for each purpose. You see, the central enterprise architecture team is defining all the kinds of standards. And again, remember, there's four different kinds. Technology, architecture, methodology, and process. And these may not be a fit across every business unit. As a matter of fact, it's also really hard across the enterprise, across the company, to gain consensus on these. Those poor enterprise architects are the most hated people in the company. <laughs> and also the other thing is that it does promote a lot of IT dissatisfaction and consequently also a lot of user dissatisfaction. A small team to put up a quick website has all this basic infrastructure and those are the standards they have to use. And so we can't get websites out as fast as we possibly can. And furthermore, really strong governance is needed in this kind of model. And because a lot of people are going to be unhappy 
about those standards and attempt to form kind of rebel camps, uh, subversive kind of projects to bring in other kinds of technologies. And so it's a lot of strong governance needed. So we can see the negatives are really, really powerful here. However, I do want to stress the fact that low-cost reusable assets and also that overall complexity across the company um, are the advantages of the prescriptive strategy. So for more information, certainly as a background, you can go to Lesson 62, Enterprise Architecture Strategies, for really the introduction to these. And we're going to spend uh, the next three after this looking at the other enterprise architecture strategies. And also then we'll have a lesson looking at really case studies on how to apply these. Um, all of these lessons can be found in developer2architect.com under Software Architecture Monday, that's slash lessons. Also, I do private training classes in Software Architecture Fundamentals, Microservices Architecture and Design, and also Analyzing Architecture. You can find more information about those training classes uh, on my website as well. I do a lot of speaking at conferences. I also have public training and also online training that you can find through the upcoming events portion of my website. And so this has been Lesson 63, The Prescriptive Strategy of Enterprise Architecture. Again, my name is Mark Richards. Uh, stay tuned uh, in the next lesson, 64, uh, for the other centralized one, which we can compare against prescriptive, which is the classic alternative strategy.